Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the eighth video tutorial on Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. Today we're going to talk <coughs> excuse me, about optimizer constraints. Uh, this is really a follow-up, uh, an extension of the last video tutorial on optimizer strategies. We're going to talk about what are constraints, how to set up the interface to use them efficiently, how to invoke those constraints, and how to use them. We'll give an example for most every one of the optimizer strategies that we talked about in the last uh, video tutorial. So, what are constraints? Let's bring up the interface. As discussed last time, the optimizers in WI Designer are parametric. They vary a number of parameters related to the, the geometry of the flute you're, you're designing. Each one of those parameters has boundaries, an upper value and a lower value, and only within those two bounds uh, are those values uh, varied by the optimizer. That, in its simplest term, is what a constraint is. I like to think of the, the constraints, though, as flute design specifications. For example, you have a client that has very small hands and can't cover big holes and can't handle a finger spread of more than a, an inch. Those are specified in constraints. You could set up an optimizer that would honor those constraints. So that said, let's bring up, first let's talk then about how to set up the interface to efficiently use constraints. Uh, the complication is that each one of these optimizer strategies has its own unique set of constraints and each one of those constraint types has to match the same number of holes that the instrument you're working on. And to keep that all straight, there's a directory structure that's maintained by the program, and with a very simple configuration, uh, you can use that directory structure. So, if we bring up the options pane, there is this one option parameter called constraints directory and as you can see on my desktop I downloaded uh, the zip file from uh, github I exploded it into um, a folder and inside that folder is a constraints directory that's where we want to point um, if you look in that constraint directory, and there's really no need to um, at a systems level, you see there's a directory for each one of the, the currently implemented instruments under the NAF, and we're primarily going to be talking about Native American style flutes tonight. Uh, there's a directory for each one of the optimizer strategies named as the, the program looks at them, not user-friendly names. And it, under each one of those, there's a directory with the number of, of holes. And under there, there's where the constraints lie. Um, in order to save you from having to navigate that structure, if you just set this value to that folder, it will find them for you. So now how do you invoke constraints? Well first of all you want to set an instrument so that the program knows uh, how many holes you're working with and what and the study model that you're using. So let's open the same instrument we've been, been playing with, the uh, three-quarter inch bore. Um, 
a flute that is a starter for an A4. Now, a few ways, there's three ways, actually there's four ways of invoking a constraint. Um, first, you need to select the optimizer so we know what we're working with. Then, you'll notice that with an instrument and an, and an optimizer selected, uh, this menu item, Open Constraints, is available. So our Create Default Constraints and Create Blank Constraints. If we do the Open Constraints, you can see that we dove down in automatically to the directory that had that optimizer, that study model, um, that number of holes, and found in this case, the only constraint that I have set for that. Let's cancel out of that. The second way is to get the default constraints that um, the program has defined for that number of holes and that particular optimization strategy. So if we do that, constraints pop up um, and it says the constraints name is default and it had pulled that up and it has values for the lower and upper bound and I'll, I'll close this and I'll get back to it in a, in a second. The third way is if you want to create a const constraint set de novo. So we just selected create blank constraints and this looks just like the default constraints except for every constraint in each row um, in this this display is a constraint uh, the lower and upper bounds are zero so you start from scratch and the fourth way just to be complete is constraints just like any of the other persisted um, structures are just XML files. You can open it with the open file dialog box, but then you're responsible for finding it and keeping track of it. There is no requirement that you keep constraints that you create in that constraints directory. Uh, you're just making it hard on yourself if you do, if you put them somewhere else. So now let's bring up um, this constraint and look at it. It has this has just one parameter in the FIPPLE factor uh, optimizer and it optimizes the FIPPLE factor. If you recall that's just one of the mouthpiece parameters uh, that describes the effect of your TSH and your bird geometry in one in one little empirical factor. So the constraint tells you what it's called, um, what its units of measure are, and this one is dimensionless, it's a ratio, um, no dimensions on it. The lower bound is 0.2 and the upper bound is 1.5. Um, you're likely never to change this, and I have a whole whole video just about what FIPPLE factor means and, and how to use it, so I won't delve into this in any great detail. In fact, I'm done dealing with it. So let's close that constraint. I won't even do the optimization on it in this case. Um, the next one in order of complexity is whole size only. And prior video said, uh, told you that this was a optimizer that just changes the whole size, nothing else. So let's bring up um, it's constraint and again I only have one of them and it says a half inch max so lower bounds are um, about an eighth of an inch except for the top hole which it says can be even smaller and the upper bound the largest you're going to let that hole be is a half inch 0.5 now the other difference between choosing open constraints and create default or create blank constraints are 
in the verbiage here, and it's it's best seen here. It says hole six, which is at the top, down to hole one at the bottom. That's what I happen to use. That's pretty much NAF standard, um, and it doesn't change even with the names of the holes that are in your your instrument that you invoked with it. However, if you want it to reflect whatever you called your holes, because you called them something different, um, then you need to do create default or create blank constraints. And I'll give you an example. Let's change this um, hole 6 to uh, hole top. And now let's create a default constraints. And you can see whole top, and that's the top diameter. So it reflects then what the names of the holes are in the selected instrument. So let's bring up, so you can see that uh, we cannot yet optimize the instrument because we haven't selected a tuning. So let's bring up a tuning and throughout these tutorials I've been using a chromatic tuning. This is that same A4 chromatic tuning that goes all the way up um, through C6, so three semitones into the second octave. However, I saved it with the weights um, such that it really is just a minor scale in one octave. You can see that the C, C sharp um, has a weight of zero. It's not going to be used either in assessing tuning accuracy or in the optimizer and so forth. None of the second octave notes um, have a weight of anything but zero. So let's optimize this instrument. But first we're going to have to select this constraint. So a constraint is a necessary part of um, the optimization and now the optimizer is good to go and let's optimize it. And it says we got a perfect optimization. It gave us a new instrument and let's check that optimization and sure enough for the notes and I said it was a, a minor scale and there they are. Um, there is no deviation for any of the uh, design notes. Let's look at the instrument that results and ah, even though the holes are close enough together, we have some holes that are bigger than 0.3 inches and our customer um, can't cover anything bigger than 0.3 inches. So Let's go into the constraints and change all of these 0.5 values to 0.3. Okay, they're all set at 0.3. Um, let's lose this instrument and select the starter again and we're ready to optimize. We didn't have to save this constraints file and it's still selected. And now we look at the flute. All of the holes are 0.3 inches or less. And it's no longer a perfect flute. Um, just by varying the hole size. So we would have to move the, the layout of those, those holes in order to get that, that back in tune. Let's go back to the um, original constraint. So I'm just going to delete that instead of um, rebuilding it and we'll open it again. And there we are back to 0.5 inches and let's create that optimized flute again. That's a perfect flute. And I have a different customer 
who says, ah, I want to be able to half hole hole one and 0.31 inches I think is too small to half hole. I want that hole to be at least 0.35 inches. Well, we can go back into the, the constraints definition and just for hole one, say the minimum size is 0.35. And optimize that flute. And now the bottom hole is 0.35 inches and um, the tuning has again changed on us because you just can't um, optimize based upon hole size. You have to move the holes around. Um, but that's the kind of thing that you can do with that particular optimizer. You probably want to use it in more limited circumstances like what happens if I move a hole uh, south a tenth of an inch? How much bigger do I have to make it? So um, change that position by a tenth of an inch and then use that optimizer just to change the hole size. Okay, we've worried that one enough. Let's get back to where we were, close everything down, and the next optimizer. Now this is the one that you're likely to use um, the most. It changes the hole sizes and the positions. So let's open a constraint based upon a six hole flute. And since I use it a lot, I have, and I provided as samples, uh, a number of constraint sets with a maximum hole spacing anywhere from one and an eighth, one and a quarter, 1.4, which I consider um, what most experienced players can reach easily, and 1.5 for us big fingered guys. And let's do 1.25. I think that's a, a nice standard. And we'll open that up. So notice that the constraint set, the, nu the number of constraints, and what those constraints represent change with each one of the optimizer strategies. In this case, we have, as in the prior, a constraint for every single hole size. Now we have a constraint for the bore length. Um, we have a constraint for the um, spacing of the top hole from the bore as a function, as a fraction of the bore length, and I'll have a whole tutorial on that as well. This is to, to let you control uh, nodal interference. And then for everything else, we have a hole spacing. And the units of measure are inches, which simply reflects the default unit of measure you selected in the options pane, inches. If I change that and open these up, um, it would show the unit of measure that you used um, here instead. So you'll notice that this is hole six to hole five distance. It's a spacing. Hole five to hole four distance and so forth. Um, so parameters used by the optimizers just have to be translatable to geometry. Um, holes, uh, as far as the flute is concerned, its geometry just have a position, a diameter, and a height. Um, they don't have a spacing, um, but the optimizer uh, structure translates into that positioning. And you can see that I have pretty pudgy fingers, so I don't want the holes any closer than uh, 0.8 inches. For the top three holes, they're spaced. There's only two spaces in between them, one and a quarter inches. This spacing between hole three and hole four represents uh, the spacing between your two hands, so it can get quite large. And then we're back to 1.25 and 1.25 pretty much the same representation for hole size. So let's throw that at the at the flute. 
with that same tuning file. And surprise, the final error is zero, and that confirms a zero uh, tuning deviation. Now let's try that same test that we did with the gentleman wanting uh, this hole to be at least 0.35 instead of 0.33. And now the program has more variables to play with, so let's see what it does. So let's set hole one with a lower bound, a minimum size of 0.35. And we'll leave the maximum hole size a 0.5. And we'll optimize again. Uh, now that bottom hole is 0.35. And the tuning is still perfect. So if we can move the holes around a little bit, um, that along with the hole size uh, assures really in this very simple tuning case that we can find a good solution. Now notice that in this solution the top two spacings, the, the spacing between the top three holes are pretty consistent in the same but they're not in the bottom. So that leads us to the next constraint set and the next optimizer type. So let's close all this down again and go to grouped hole position and size. And again, let's take the def default. And you see I can't choose anything because I don't have an instrument selected. Select it. Open constraints. And I just have one, which is a two, two group, one and a quarter inch max spacing. So let's see what th that looks like as a constraint set. And again, just like instruments and tunings, uh, the metadata shows in an open fi file dialog box. So we open that. Now you can see the groups are, are enumerated inside the constraints. So group one has holes six, five, and four. Uh, then there's a space between hole four and three. They're in the different groups and group two has hole three, two, and one. And now there's within group spacing of one and a quarter inches and within group spacing one and a quarter inches and three inches between the two groups. And again, the hole size is about what we saw before. So let's first do the, the initial uh, optimization. And this is, this is a very simple problem. You're going to likely do much more complicated problems by either stretching the limits of the tuning by larger or smaller flutes or by adding more notes to be in tune. Uh, as I said before, I make chromatic flutes and so I'm really stretching the design to get all of those notes, all 15 of them in tune. So now, uh, again, we had a final error of zero. But the spacing here is the same for hole um, 6 to 5 and 5 to 4, and from hole 3 to 2, and from 2 to 1. And to confirm uh, no error, there is no error. Now, there might be an error if we add um, that same design specification that I want this bottom hole to be 0.35 inches or greater. So let's do that. That's 0.35 inches. Let's do the optimization again. And we got a zero for our final error. So 0.35 inches for the hole and perfect tuning. So we can accommodate the person that wants to have a hole big enough at the bottom to half hole easily. We did make the hole spacing a little bigger to accommodate that. 1.22 in, in, in the second case and 1.07 in the first. All flutes are a compromise.
Now you saw, and, and I will give a whole tutorial on uh, whole grouping as well, but just as a preview, you saw that when I opened up the uh, constraints, there was only um, that one constraint, which was two whole groups. And the default constraints are the same way. That's, that's what I consider the default for um, a six-hole flute um, with this kind of optimizer. However, what if you didn't want that whole grouping? Well, in that case, you can start from scratch, which means let's create a blank constraint and you get another interface and this interface lets you define whole groupings and just as a teaser and we'll get into it in more detail in the separate video um, the default whole group definition so this puts boundaries between holes that are in the same group Here you can see there's only two boundaries and it includes all the the holes which means they're all in the same group they'll have all all the same spacing uh, the old uh, ideal equal spaced holes so let's say okay now we have one whole group we'll have to fill in the values for the upper and lower bounds but now the program is capable of optimizing for equally spaced holes all of them however many you have in the flute I'm not going to run the optimizer on that. That's, like I said, a teaser for the separate video. And there's two more optimizers, and I'll show you, but I won't run the optimization because, again, these are covered in a separate video. And that's where the bore profile also is changed by the optimizer. Let's do the, um, the simplest one although it takes the longest of all these optimizers to run, which is a single taper, no whole grouping. And we'll just look at what the, the constraints are that, that you can, can play with in your design. This is also the first one that is um, a maker set of designed um, specifications as opposed to a user outcome. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's open one. And I, there's a lot of these uh, constraint sets because this is pretty much the typical one that I use in my flute making. So let's again do one and a quarter inches. And we have some more constraints, which is why it takes longer. We have identical um, to the whole size and position uh, constraints for whole position and for whole size, but we now have a new set which is single bore taper. And there are three um, non-dimensional parameters that the, the optimizer will vary um, to generate a, a bore profile um, that has at least one section of it having a di diameter change in a linear taper. And Again, in, in the separate tutorial, I'll go through that parameterization. But we're getting more and more complicated. It's getting more and more interesting. And the final one is um, one that I also use a lot, a single taper group toll. So it's the, um, the parallel to the grouped hole position in size, but it also puts a taper in the bore. And let's open the default, or let's open a constraint, and I just have one of those. And as in the grouped hole position, now the holes are grouped, and the default has um, two groups, holes 6, 5, and 4 in the top group, and one, two, and three in the bottom group, and the same taper parameters, con constraints, um, as the single taper, no hole grouping. These are the fun ones, um, and it really isn't that hard to make a flute um, with, with a taper in part of the bore, and it certainly helps 
uh, with with the whole layout and the tuning. Um, I think that's all I'm going to talk about for constraints. Um, let's reiterate. our usual URLs. Now, um, please go to um, the WI, the original name was WWI Designer, um, our wiki page. Um, browse through the pages. There is a specific page on constraints, so it talks about um, much of what I've talked about here, probably a little more um, verbiage, uh, a little more coverage on why we did things the way we did. Um, give it a read. It's not a long paper. Um, the same URL for getting the latest release. If you're using the program and you find uh, issues, bugs, have questions, please visit and fill out the issues page. Um, Keep looking at the video's tutorial page uh, for upcoming videos and as the entry point to um, written documentation, and I didn't do a lot, there's a lot more that has been done for the whistle design uh, portion of the program, um, use this URL. So until the next um, video tutorial, have a good day.